Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the USS Noob Buster. Its mission, to boldly go where no one has gone before and ruthlessly exterminate noobs. Wait, no, Darren, this is a diplomatic mission. <laughs> but my prime directive is noob removal. <laughs> I can't take them. <clears throat> uh, Darren, that's not our mission. We'll get to this later. But first, hello and welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Chubajo. And I'm Fleet Admiral Hex. And I am the sentient ship computer that goes rogue. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I am Darren, space explorer. Darren, you are going to take us to space later, right? Yeah, last week you totally promised. You promised. Uh, affirmative. Uh, just as soon as we're cleared for liftoff. Oh, so exciting. Uh, also this week, we take control of our very own spaceship in Star Command. All right, Darren, you get clearance for liftoff and I'm going to go read the news. Affirmative. What should I pack to take into space? Uh, how many games can I fit in my bag, do you think? All of them. Really? Bajo here at the Spawn Point News Desk. Electronic Arts has announced that it has secured an exclusive license to create and publish games based on the Star Wars franchise. EA has confirmed their studios DICE, Visceral and Bioware will all work on Star Wars games aimed at the core audience. However, no specific projects were announced. Meanwhile, Disney will remain responsible for creating mobile and social games based on the franchise. We all know having to get up and change discs is annoying and time consuming, so Finn Zwenker built a machine to do it for him. The device is made completely out of Lego and can hold up to 20 different discs. It is able to eject, remove, choose and insert discs and can be completely controlled remotely using a mobile phone. <laughs> 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 <coughs> uh, 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 Alright, Darren, let's go to space! Negative, I'm still performing pre-space flight checks. Oh, oh alright, well let's build a space empire and take over the galaxy with Star Drive. Affirmative. Star Drive comes from the long line of 4X strategy games that include classics such as Civilization. The 4Xs stand for Explore, Expand, Exploit, and my favourite X, Exterminate. <laughs> 4X games offer vast research trees, huge maps, games that can stretch on for days, multiple opponents, and even the option to win via peace or diplomacy if you so choose. Ah yes, but peace is boring, isn't it, when you've got an entire interstellar fleet armed to the teeth, ready to destroy any anyone that stands in your way. Affirmative, Bajo. Yes, and unlike most 4X games, this takes place in real time, much like the excellent Sins of the Solar Empire series. And I think it's the right decision because it just keeps things moving along and I always find real-time combat way more interesting to watch anyway. Mm. There's no real story here except for the story you forge yourself. You simply pick one of a range of races, all with your various good and bad traits, or create your own if you want to. Then you hit engage and the game begins. And no space empire will thrive with only a single planet, so you immediately set about exploring new solar systems and colonizing uninhabited planets. The more planets you claim means the bigger your population gets, the stronger your economy is, the quicker you can research new tech, and ultimately, the more power you will wield. Each planet has three main traits, how much food and production it can output and how many people it can support. Most planets are fairly barren and can barely support a small colony to start with, but you'll unlock various bits of tech that allow you to terraform and turn any settlement into a thriving colony. And you'll want that to happen as quickly as possible, otherwise there'll just be a drain on your civilization. It can seem quite overwhelming at first, as you're left to figure things out in the middle of a massive galaxy. And while the tutorial in the main menu gives you some helpful screens to read through, they will leave you with plenty of questions unanswered as the game begins. I like how much you can automate in this game. You can simply go into a little menu, tick a few boxes and straight away your scouts will start scouting and your colony ships will start colonising and your empire will start building itself before your eyes. 
It takes away all that micromanagement, which can be frustrating in games like this. Yeah, I did find that could be a bit of a problem, though. For example, as you expand, you'll come across other civilizations, and none of them have any issue with you unless you provoke them. The thing is, they often claim to have rights over various star systems that your scouts found, even if they haven't colonized it yet. But if you have auto colonize on, then your colony ships will just waltz in and start a colony regardless, potentially kicking off a war. Yeah, and there's no way to tell them not to do that. Oh, one of my favourite parts of the game was getting to design your own ships. There are plenty of pre-made options to choose from, but if you prefer, there's an easy-to-use ship creator and editor which lets you customise your ships to your heart's content. I like that you can put the ships in formations, but really you just win by sheer numbers rather than clever thinking. Although I do like that you can take control of ships individually if you want to. And there's even simple land battles and espionage missions you can launch, which add a nice extra layer to everything. And I did love how it looked when your fleet launches in and out of hyperspace. It's got that perfect little pop. And bigger ships tend to be slower too, so it's so satisfying getting your whole fleet to rendezvous just outside a system and then warp them all at once as an armada of doom. I was a bit upset that there was no multiplayer though. I mean, these games are always the most fun when you've got a few friends with you, so I thought that was a bit of a missed opportunity. But we should wrap this up, Arjo. What are you giving it? Well, I did find it a bit slow paced at times, but I love the scale of this game, so I'm giving it 7.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. Yeah, I love all those little sci fi references, especially those Ewok type owl walk things. I'm giving it 7.5 as well. Darren to Kerry O'Brien, requesting clearance for interstellar time travel! Uh, just for one. Darren, the data analyzing robot for the ruthless extermination of noobs. Uh, Darren, you said you'd take us with you. Uh, well, I've run a series of computational simulations. Well, one computational simulation, and unfortunately, your organic life forms would be unable to withstand the forces of interstellar time travel. What do you mean? What would happen to us exactly? Uh, you'd explode. Ooh. I'll implode. It'd get messy. But don't worry, I'll be back before you know it. <gasps> It is now February 1962. The Beatles are blasting off on their musical career. The Ranger 3 probe has just missed its rendezvous with the moon. John Glenn has just become the first American astronaut to orbit the Earth in the Friendship 7 space capsule. And one of the very first video games has been created at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Space War! Inspired by the Lensman novels of E.E. E. Doc Smith, Space War was a sci-fi game that ran on MIT's PDP-1 minicomputer. Two players each took control of a spaceship and had to destroy their opponent while wrestling with the gravity of a nearby star. Just as NASA was learning the hard way, getting your orbit right isn't easy. Space War was a hit in the emerging hacker scene, with users often tweaking the code to add new features, such as realistic star maps and hyperspace warps. Its winning gameplay formula was copied by early arcade games like Computer Space, and versions would later be sold for home systems such as the Atari 2600. One of the best games to be inspired by Space War was Star Control by Fred Ford and Paul Reich III, the chaps who would later create Skylanders. Oh, well, I'd better return to the present before I get lost in space! Restarting space-time continuum. What? Oh, Darren, what just happened? I don't know, but it's time for us good game. Yeah. Fasten your seatbelts and hold on tight. It's time to leave the planet. Welcome aboard the HMAS Darren. It's five-year mission Darren. to explore strange Darren. new worlds. Can't breathe. To seek out... Turn on the air, Darren. Turn on the air. Oh, I'll just turn on the oxygen. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Oh. Darren, that was... That was awesome. Are we actually in space? Affirmative. We're currently aboard the shuttlecraft, located in a medium Earth orbit 20,000 kilometres above the Earth's surface, travelling at approximately 130 metres a second. That's impressive, Darren. This is so cool. Hang on, I'm going to take a selfie. Ready, ready? Ready? Get in, get in, get in. Space, space time, time continuum. 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 Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I suppose we should get on with answering some questions. So yes. uh, I think I've got one <coughs> up here. My shuttlecraft. My turn to answer the questions. Well, OK, Darren, you can answer a couple of questions, but not all of them. Does that mean you get to pick the questions as well? Oh, I'd be delighted to, Hex. And first up, we have this from KSP Deorbit Not in the Kerbal Gerbil Space Center. 
Western Australia. Huh. T-minus five, four, three, two, one, and blast off. Hey, Banjo, hey, Hex, I love KSP, but I suck at it. I can't make it into orbit or build a good space station. Ship, plane, can you please help me? Also, can you upload your KSP ships or saves? Thanks. And can Goose and Darren do Ask Good Game with you? Thanks. And Banjo, here are some smileys. Well, those are pretty crazy. Those are like alien smileys. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. KSP, I think we can help you out with that. <laughs> Affirmative. Now, there are a near infinite amount of ship and rocket designs you can build, and each should be built to suit the specific task at hand. A rocket to launch a satellite into orbit is going to be very different from a rocket to land Kerbals on the Mun. And I'd be happy to share some of my rocket designs on our website. Although, if you give a man a rocket, he'll just go into space. But teach a man how to build a rocket, and he can go and master the universe! <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the basics of building a rocket. Hey, Darren, hey, Darren, check out this one I made. It's got, like, a bajillion engines, so it's going to be really fast and go really high and go at line speed, and it'll be awesome. Three, two, one, launch! Oh. Oh, that was a very impressive failure, Barjo, but perhaps you should leave the rocket science to me? Now, let's run through the basic fundamentals of rocketry. Fundamental one, understanding drag and gravity. They're your two main enemies to leaving the atmosphere and entering space. Make sure you have a streamlined rocket to reduce the atmosphere dragging on it. And you don't want your rocket to be too heavy or else you'll never have enough thrust to overcome gravity. Sometimes bigger isn't better. Hey, Darren, 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 Darren. Okay, how about this? I, I've, got really, I've got a really good one. It's elegant, um, it's light, it's sleek, it's, it's lightweight. Just like me. Yeah. Uh, I reckon it's going to beat Barjo. Are you ready? All right, three, two, one, go! Oh, what a shame. Oh, it didn't, oh, work, didn't work very well, did it, Hex? kind of broke down. You'll need a bigger rocket with more fuel than that, Hex, yeah, but you're, but you're getting there. So, fundamental two, symmetry. A rocket should be as symmetrical as possible. You should use the symmetry tools to ensure your rocket maintains a constant centre of gravity. If one side of your rocket is significantly heavier than the other side, then you're not going to have a good time. I don't know, Darren, I, I reckon this one would work. I, I severely doubt that. Just you watch. Oh, Just no you way that watch. Is it? Oh, it didn't work that well. <laughs> maybe, maybe it needs a little bit of tweaking. Just needs a little bit maybe of adjustment. Had spirit, though. <laughs> More than a little. Gusto. Fundamental three. Stabilize. When building a rocket, it's essential to include stabilizers. An advanced SAS module will use all possible stabilization options to automatically keep your rocket on course when enabled. Mm. Then, by combining them with vectoring engines, RCS engines, and winglets, your rocket will be able to correct any course deviations and fly straight and true. OK, Darren. Well, I've whacked some stabilizers on this man boy now, so I think it's ready to have another go. Here we go. All right. Do a little bit better. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh dear. Didn't uh, well, stabilization can only help a bad rocket design so much, Barjo. Back to the drawing board, I think. Pretty good rocket myself. <laughs> Negative. Fundamental four. Efficiency. Building an efficient rocket is the key to success. You'll want to have a mix of engines and fuel to help slip the surly bonds of Earth. And the best way to do that is to have multiple stages. You'll usually want a central rocket powered by liquid fuel and a thrust vectoring engine. However, that will not be enough to get into orbit, so you'll want to attach several stacks of powerful solid fuel boosters to assist with liftoff. And by setting these as a separate stage attached via decouplers, you can detach them once they run out of fuel. Efficient. Mm, yeah, all right, Darren. Well, uh, I'm gonna have another go. So, let's see, stabilizers, efficiency. Okay, how does this look? Oh, excellent work, Hex. Really? That rocket should do nicely. Let's test it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one. Lift off! Oh, 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 brilliant! I think you've got the basics down. It's all about a good balance of power to weight and aerodynamics. Yeah. Well, you know, my, my, my rocket had style and character, though, and that counts for something. More character, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was right, Darren? Good, good looking rocket. Not yeah. if you want to get into space, Barger. <clears throat> well, let's move on to this one from Meme Master, who is in space outside Australia. Maybe if you want to go into space with style. I can't click my fingers and. Ant <laughs> <laughs> you need some kind of Wookiee clap. <laughs> More of a seal, Barjo. I was about to say, you look like a seal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Barjo and Hex, I am just writing to ask one question. 
how do you keep your ship in orbit around the Earth in Kerbal Space Program? I'm a big fan of both your show and the four are the best. Now, Darren, I've been listening to what you've been saying about good rocket ship design, so I think it's fair if I just take over the controls of the ship for a moment. Let's go! Negative! Negative! Oh, you've just assembled all our sandwiches into space! What have you done? Oh, oh, that was awesome! Do oh, it. yes, let's go again! That do not so do that awesome. again, Barger! That's very dangerous oh. and mildly terrifying. I'm too. Exciting. <clears throat> uh, well, me master, entering into orbit is an essential early step in mastering the exciting realm of space flight. <clears throat> From orbit, you can easily launch your adventures to anywhere in the Kerbal system. And now that we know how to build a good rocket, getting into orbit is a relatively simple matter. As we separate our early stages and begin to enter into space, switch to the map view and monitor your apoapsis. Once we see it's approaching 80,000 metres high, you can cut your engines and disengage your SAS module. But won't we fall back down if we cut our engines, Darren? Oh, no, Hex. At this altitude, we're safely out of the atmosphere and have enough speed to not worry about that for now. So now tilt your craft so that you're facing to the east or west and then re-engage your engines. Now go to map view and watch your trajectory until you see the opposite point to your apoapsis, the periapsis, appear at the other side of the Kerbin. Congratulations, you are now in orbit. Oh. Seems simple enough, Darren. How about we tackle something a bit more advanced next? Excellent idea, Barjo. So let's head to this question from Nathan G from the Rainbow Road outside Australia. Dear GGSP, this question is for Darren. On Kerbal Space Program, I want to get to Mars, but I don't know how much fuel and stages that I will need to get there. Thanks, peace. <laughs> I'd be happy to help, Nathan. Now, actually building a rocket to reach Duna isn't too difficult, especially if we're only planning a one-way trip. Return trips, however, are much trickier. But as long as you build a rocket that can easily get into orbit with plenty of fuel left for a few long burns, you'll make it there easily. Something similar to this design should do the job nicely. That's great, Darren. Hey, Darren, uh, where's the bathroom up here? Because I need to go wee-wee's in the toilet. Yeah, me too. Uh, well, I didn't design this shuttle with humans in mind, so there isn't one, Barger. No, what? But, Darren, I really need to go! No bathroom! Well, I suppose you could go out the airlock. OK. Uh, but you will suffer ebulism, hypoxia, hypocapnia, decompression sickness, extreme temperature variations and cellular mutation, and deconstruction from high-energy photons and subatomic particles. Uh-huh. And your eardrums will burst. All right, well, I will try to hang on then, I guess. Excellent! Now, Nathan, the tricky part is, of course, plotting your course and timing your burn so that you actually arrive at Duna and don't simply fly off endlessly into space. Uh, one way to make your life easier is to do what NASA does and wait for the planets to align in a way that makes the trip as easy and fast as possible. The alignment that works best is when Duna's orbit is slightly ahead of Kerbin's. If you move the map and look at it like a clock with the sun at the centre, you'd want Kerbin to be at around 1 or 1.30 when Duna is at 12. So, with our planets aligned, get your rocket heading into an equatorial orbit around Kerbin heading east. Continue to burn your engines and switch to the map view, and eventually you'll want to see your orbital path switch from orbiting Kerbin to orbiting the Sun, or Kerbal as it's known. Cut your engines now. <laughs> At first, you will see the line of your orbit is yellow, but we want to wait for it to become blue. Once it is, then align your ship with the prograde icon and begin a burn. Keep a close eye on your apoapsis in your map view and burn steadily until you see it intersect with Duna's orbit. Be careful not to overshoot too much. If you've done it right, then you should see a little icon appear where your craft and Duna will eventually meet. We are now on our way! As we reach the encounter point with Duna, we will want to turn our ship around and begin another burn to slow down until it gets captured by Duna's gravity, like so. Now wait until we reach the periapsis of our orbit around Duna and begin another retrograde burn to slow right down until our orbital path becomes a collision course with Duna. Ooh, this is tense. Move over, Darren. I got this. Negative, negative. Barja, I really don't think you should do this. Remember what happened with your Mars landing, moon landing thing? How hard can this be? Hex? Let's slow do it. down, Barjo. You're, you're Let's coming into hot. Retro thrusters engaged. No, 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 power. no you're coming into hot, Barjo. No. no. <laughs> Negative. You're just a rubbish astronaut. He's not an astronaut, he's a Wookiee. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> now, let's get you back down to Earth before you leak your primitive human fluids in my shuttle. Oh, yeah, get I almost there. forgot! Okay, let's go! Here we go! Right. Back to Earth! Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh. 
Oh, 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 to the toilet, Hicks! Oh. Chrono accelerator engaged. Oh, 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 oh much better. <laughs> now, guys, I've always wanted to command my own starship, and now I can with Star Command. Star Command's adventure begins when you're given the skeleton of a spaceship. It comes with a bridge and an engine, but you need to build everything else, and this is where the strategy begins. There are a range of specific rooms you can build, like weapons or shield boosters, but you only have enough tokens to build two at the start. To begin with, I built a dodge room to evade incoming attacks and a machine gun room to dish out some serious damage. As I started to explore this universe, I discovered that it's not a very nice place at all. Everybody's out to get you, especially these guys who wanted to put my crew's brains in fish bowls in robot suits. Oh, an upgrade! I've got to say, for a strategy game, the combat is really intense. Mm. Just firing your weapons requires a tricky minigame, and it's easy to fail and miss your window to attack. Worst of all, you're left defenseless for an agonizing couple of minutes when your weapons recharge. So frustrating! You know, they say in space nobody can hear you scream, except when you're playing this on the bus. Sorry to my fellow passengers. <laughs> I actually quite liked the minigame. I thought it added a nice layer of challenge. Uh, unlike most noobish games where you just press a button to fire, a skilled gamer like myself can carve through enemy shields with a perfectly orchestrated volley of laser fire! <laughs> so many lasers! <laughs> There are quite a few things you can do to protect yourself. My ship was rarely boarded because I had upgraded my hull and shield abilities. But if a boarding party did get through my shields, I was ready with a security team positioned near the middle of the ship so they couldn't be sucked out. And I kept a medical staff member with them to heal them during battle. And it's quite fun working out these little strategies. Yeah, I mean, I think we can all agree that Star Command's battles are handled really impressively. It, it takes concepts we've seen in games like FTL and then just expands them with more options. It can get a little cramped on a little screen, though, so play it on a bigger phone or a tablet if you can. I do wish my crew were a bit more self-sufficient. A medic can be standing close by to an injured crew member and they'll just stare at the wall until you order them into action. Also, engineers will happily watch your equipment burning nearby. It's a shame there's no option to fast forward the trivial stuff like maintenance. I also thought it was unfair that enemy ships' weapons charged faster than yours, so they could always get the first shot in. Charging lasers! Still charging lasers! Even after you've fully upgraded all your weapons, they're still slower than every enemy you face in the game. Yeah, those are fair gripes. But, you know, even though this is an ambitious game that possibly could have taken things a bit further, there's still some really great strategy ideas here, and I had a good time, so I'm giving it eight. This game is quite similar to Faster Than Light, which we reviewed on PC a while back, but you can play this one on the go, so I'm giving it eight and a half out of ten rubber chickens. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know he had such a command of this language. What's he saying, Darren? Uh, he was just counting to ten. I've been studying at Wookiee University for seven years. Night classes. Right. Well, unfortunately, our journey through space has come to an end. It's time to get back to real life. But next week, we'll be going on a journey of a different sort as we explore the history of action RPGs with Evoland. <laughs> Did you know that the original version of that game was created in a mere 30 hours as a competition entry? Hmm. That's impressive, Darren, but we'll have to wait till next week to see how it turned out because we're out of time, so Barjo out. Hex out. Darren out. Yeah, Darren, this bit's something that's bugging me all episode. Go on. Well, you've been into space hundreds of times, but you've never worn a space suit. Why are you wearing one now? Good point. Well, this is cosplay. Oh, Fancy yeah. dress. I made it myself. Oh, the attention to detail is incredible. Look at oh, your little you. NASA patch there yeah. and... Who's your, who's your designer, Darren? Your oh, I've got a consultant at uh, Cape Canaveral. Oh, can he, I...? He deals in chunky plus sizes. Ah. Oh. Are these from a washing machine? Negative.